Hi, in this video, we would have a quick overview of cell cycle and the cell division process. So let's talk about the cell cycle first. We know cell cycle is actually divided into several phases like G1, S, G2 and the mitotic phase. Now each of these phase has different time of occurrence. For example, G1 is the longest whereas mitotic phase is the shortest. Now 90% of the cell cycle time is devoted for the interphase. So have you ever wondered why interphase is so long and what really takes place during this long time of interphase? Now the rest 10% time is devoted together for prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. And among that anaphase and metaphase last for a few seconds. So in this video we would try to understand how this time distribution is maintained, regulated and why this mitotic phase takes so less time whereas interphase takes a lot of time. So let's talk about the G1 phase at the first. So the G1 phase is the first part of the interphase. At the G1 phase the cell receives signal from the outside. The signal could be a growth factor. At this particular phase cell talks to its en environment and try to determine that the environment is feasible for further cell division or not. Imagine a situation where the, the environment is not so much feasible and in environment not much growth factor is present then the cell won't take a risky decision to do a division because division requires a hell lot of energy, hell lot of protein synthesis and a regulated process. So cell would stop and go in question, quiescence at that particular time. Let's say there is enough amount of growth factor in G1 phase. What cell would do is try to divide right now. There is a particular time point in the G1 phase, in the late G1 phase known as restriction points. Once the cell cross the restriction point, it is committed to division. It has to divide. Now at this end of the G1 phase, the cells also duplicates its mitochondria. It also duplicates its centrioles, which is important for a cell division purpose. Now let's talk about the S phase or the synthesis phase. As the name suggests, you can clearly understand S phase is the time where the replication of the genetic material takes place. Now S phase is pretty long as well because a lot of enzymes are required for replicating the genomic material, right? And those proteins which are important for replicating the genomic material was previously synthesized in the G1 phase so that they can be readily used in the S phase. After S phase, there is a G2 phase. Now in this gap 2 phase, few important things happen. In the gap 2 phase, the cell transcribes and translates all the enzymes that are necessary for the preparation to divide. And for diffusion, there are a hell lot of proteins necessary. So all of these translation and transcription, all this preparatory phase is basically the G2 phase. After it crosses the G2 phase, the cell won't have enough time to do all this synthesis stuff because at that point of time, its sole goal is to monitor the chromosome segregation process. Everything is packaged, it just needs to divide. That's why mitotic phase is so short. In mitotic phase, there are like several subdivisions like prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In this video, we would look at at least in a brief fashion that what are the main events of this phase. So first, it is prophase. From the G2 boundary to prophase, few important changes happens in the cell. First and foremost, the centrosomes which are duplicated at the end of G1 phase now try to go into the two opposite poles. They would be also visible at the microscope chromosomes decondensed and chromosomes are now visible using normal light microscope. Now you can see 
inside the nuclear lamina there is something called lamin now lamin works like a structural support for the whole nuclear membrane and lamin get phosphorylated by several proteins several cyclines which we would be talking in other videos and this would allow breaking down of lamin and dissociation of the lamin structure as a result there is a collapse of the nuclear membrane at the same time two spindle uh, two mitotic spindle apparatus with the centrosomes would try to mobilize to the opposite pole of the cell and they kind of get recruited there and wait for the metaphase to occur now at pro metaphase stage the spindles from the microtube the microtubule organizing center is moving towards the center of the cell in search of chromosomes the microtubule gets attached to the chromosome at its kinet core and try to align the chromosome at to the center of the cell which is known as the metaphagic plate after that this process of uh, positioning them into the metaphagic plate is pretty difficult and highly regulated so soon after the chromosomes are arranged in the meta metaphysic plate few quality control steps take place so first of all there are tension sensing molecules which make sure that the chromosome is uh, the chromosome is experiencing equal amount of tension from both the sides and that would ensure the equal segregation of the chromosomes now there is a classical problem in the process of separating the two chromatids because it is en enveloped inside a cohesin ring now cohesin ensures the stability of the chromosome now somehow you have to break this cohesin ring such that you can pull these chromosomes apart from the two to, to the two sides right and the cohesin is basically broken during the end of the metaphase till anaphase and the way it is broken is by an enzyme called separin separin is stimulated by maturation promoting factor or mitosis promoting factor mpf about this we would learn in a different video but let's say there is a an, let's say there is a problem in the cohesin disassembly or there is a problem in the microtubule association with the chromosome then there is an error signal and then and there cell cycle would stop it won't progress further and there are mechanisms which ensures that no error happen in this process and it is important because if this kind of error takes place during the division there could be unequal segregation of the chromosomes into two daughter cells right so there are certain substances like maturation promoting factor and many other cyclines make sure this doesn't happen but this mpf also has to be degraded at certain point mpf is degraded at the anaphase from anaphase at the start of the anaphase with the help of anaphase promoting complex now at the anaphase the chromosomes are equally segregated towards the pole of the cells after that telophase starts in telophase the prevalent activity of the dephosphorylase enzymes get rid of phosphorylation from the nuclear pores get rid of phosphorylation from lamin such that they can reorganize and on that scaffold nuclear membrane can reorganize as well so as a result nuclear membrane reorganize and two distinct nucleus has started to form following this telophase there is a karyokin the the final uh, cytokinesis division is there where a cleavage furrow is formed and after a certain point of time two cells are separated this whole process looks pretty complicated and highly regulated right if it doesn't happen in a proper fashion you would end up by getting multiple nucleus in one cell which is called a syncytia and many other pathological situation can occur in order to make sure that this process of cell division goes smoothly and all the errors can be uh, rectified there are specific cell cell cycle checkpoint mechanisms which are mainly regulated by cyclin and cdk complexes now cyclin and cdk complexes are turned on in specific time windows 
and they have their job in that restricted time windows. After that, they get degraded. If you want to learn more about Cyclone and CDK, the link is given at the end of this video. Now, we start from a single cell and from there we divide, divide and divide and grow to a whole complex organism. And how amazing is this, right? How orchestrated this whole process is. If there is a problem in this division and there is an abnormal division such that it would lead to uncontrolled cell division, it might lead to cancer. And cancer is basically a pathological situation when there is an uncontrolled cell division. The mechanism that leads to cell division and cell proliferation goes wrong in cancer. If you want to learn more about cancer, the link is given at the end of this video. So that's pretty much summarized this whole overview of cell cycle and cell division. In next videos, we would learn about the phases of the cell division in a lot more details. So stay tuned.